around year 2000, I was uh, mostly working on photonic crystals. So uh, that was probably at the peak of the photonic crystal research. So uh, I was doing a lot of uh, theoretical calculation of photonic crystal and trying to figure out uh, how to use these kind of structures for what kind of applications. There was a series of conferences on photonic crystal called PAX. These are uh, uh, attended mostly by photonic crystal communities and started in 1997. And so I've attended quite a few of those. Uh, that was one of the, uh, probably the focal point of many of the discussions about the field. So uh, that was a time when I guess uh, people were really fascinated by uh, internet, optical communications, uh, and information processing. So uh, there were a lot of discussions about trying to use photonic crystal structures for information processing, and uh, even dreaming about uh, maybe computing based on uh, photonic crystals. The idea was to uh, have uh, uh, very small optical components on the uh, single wavelength scale and to integrate them uh, on a chip uh, in a large scale way so that one can do uh, powerful optical information processing. It's uh, maybe come little by little is the right way to say it. Uh, certainly there were a lot of challenges on fabrication, on getting accurate devices, uh, but also there are uh, fundamental questions about uh, whether, for example, computing uh, entirely based on optics actually makes sense or not. So uh, that, I think, gradually influenced how people do their research in that field. At the time, I guess, at least my own thought was more like uh, looking at photonic crystal structures uh, almost entirely from a band structure perspective. And uh, it's only later that gradually uh, it become uh, useful for me to also think about uh, the individual scatter picture and to uh, gradually evolve into uh, not just looking at uh, you know, periodic structure, but looking at individual antenna structures uh, that get a lot closer to perhaps what the, uh, some of the near field optics uh, yeah. community has been doing. But the fundamental point is that they are in the end all based on Maxwell equations. So they are tremendous amount of uh, connection and similarities. Yeah. But uh, when, when I, at the time when I was uh, uh, just finishing graduate school, of course, one adopt one viewpoint, and then over years you gradually learn the other viewpoints. Yeah. In 2000, I attended a conference uh, where John Pendry gave a talk on perfect lens and that left a very strong impression on me. I thought it was, uh, even then, I thought it was a very interesting idea that you could rethink about electromagnetism uh, in a very fundamental way. And I think that really, uh, conceptually at least, uh, was a very exciting time to, to think in that way. Many of these concepts, photonic crystal or metamaterials, are of course very closely related. Uh, these days I like to tell my students that there's nothing that's 100% new and there's nothing that's 100% old. So there also, there's always a connection to existing concepts, but these new twists are important because they give you a perspective uh, that allow you to think of something that may be different. So uh, that's how I would say the uh, I wouldn't make a very strict distinction between photonic crystal and metamaterial because I do think uh, there are a lot of similarities to, uh, between the two fields and the two concepts. Uh, but by uh, emphasizing uh, e effective uh, electromagnetic response, uh, like uh, permittivity and permeability, uh, that really give an interesting perspective uh, that's not completely transparent uh, from a band structure description. I think it's both, uh, and uh, in fact, one of the things that has always been exciting about nano-optics uh, is the fact that there is a very close connection 
between fundamental studies and application. Uh, many of the early work that uh, we do, we did on um, photonic crystal, were motivated by application uh, consideration. Even the very early work in thinking about controlled spontaneous emission was motivated uh, by uh, either light emitting diodes or, light, uh, or laser application. So what I would think is that uh, the exciting aspects of it has always been at this interface between fundamental studies and uh, uh, with the prospect of trying to impact practical technology. I would say that in terms of grand challenges, uh, optics or electromagnetics is such a fundamental interaction of, the, uh, of physics. And in fact, it's probably among the two interactions that we have actual access to, the other one being gravity, but we can't really control gravity uh, very well. So uh, it's probably the most controllable fundamental interaction. So in that regard, uh, I think there are many, many areas that the ability to control electromagnetism uh, will have impact on. Uh, something that I've been personally very excited about uh, is in thinking about the energy uh, implication of controlling electromagnetism and also in thinking about the interface between, for example, uh, photonics or electromagnetics and uh, thermodynamics. And I think there are a lot of interesting things and fundamental concepts uh, in thinking about light uh, from a thermodynamic point of view and try to understand how nanophotonic structure can influence that kind of understanding. So I think there are still uh, a lot of interesting basic work that can be done. And, uh, and many of these work will have uh, practical uh, technological implications. The general property of thinking about using light to control energy flow uh, and uh, to impact, for example, uh, a wide range of energy conversion technology, I think that actually would be quite interesting uh, area to think about in the future. That's at least one of the areas that uh, I found it to be particularly exciting. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we uh, usually think about light as carrying energy, that of course is true, uh, but light also carry entropy. And uh, how do we influence this balance of uh, uh, entropy and energy flow in light? Uh, we have a very important implication ranging from uh, thinking about solar energy conversion uh, to cooling and to uh, many other energy devices. Uh, in, at the most fundamental level, uh, most of our energy comes from the sun, which is light. And so uh, the ability to think about light as a thermodynamic object, I think, uh, will play a very significant role uh, in thinking about the, uh, many of these technologies. Certainly, uh, what really I think is interesting to me uh, about nano-optics is the ability that you can shape light. You can use sub-wavelength structure to shape light. And that gives you a, a possibility uh, to control light uh, in a way that uh, was difficult to think about before.